Okay, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up your Bibles to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 11. Now, one thing I want to say is uh, a couple of announcements. Number one is on our line group this morning, I had sent out the wrong time. And so if you see it in the tie, the tie is right, the English is wrong. Some people are having some heart attacks, and that's my fault. Uh, but the times won't change. They, they won't change unless we have an anniversary or one meeting where we have both languages together. So uh, don't worry about that. Secondly, when you're, when you're worshiping online, go ahead and sing along. Uh, we hear that are recording at the church this morning. We're singing along, and we're enjoying the, the, um, the music and the time of getting together and refreshing ourselves. So as you're at home, take time in the worship too. Take some notes, write it down, just as if you're at church. And so don't forget that opportunity to study the Word of God. Now, last week, we were talking about making sure of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There comes a time in our life that we cry out to God, and we're not seeing evidence of God being there. We don't, we don't see God, or we don't feel like God's hearing our cries. And so we start to having doubts. We have to start having doubt about God. We start wondering if God is real, if God is interested in us if God was, could help us, or is this something we're supposed to do ourselves? And so that is the time in which we need to trust in the Lord, to trust in his word and, and what God has written down. So many people, they, they talk about it. They, they talk about, well, that's just blind commitment. Some people will find a reason, whatever the reason is, that they want to disregard God. They're just saying that you're not thinking for yourself. And and basically, it's not blind commitment when your trust is based on experiences that you have with the Lord. See, as we have more experiences with the Lord, we learn to trust the Lord more and that God is real. And as we go through life and we see God answering our prayers, then we can trust in the Lord to the point that we trust in the Lord with all of our daily decisions. But we live in a time where everybody wants things custom made tailor-made, everything to their own taste. Because they've been told the last couple of years they deserve it. And so before the shopping malls closed here in Bangkok, I had taken this photo at a, at, at a, at a bank. And it says, basically, do whatever you believe. Now, this is at the K-Bank, and basically it's a debit card. And, and this debit card, they're trying to sell you, this is a, a, a singing group that has uh, two ladies are Korean, one lady's Thai. And if you do get this debit card, they'll have their picture on it. And what I understand and, and saw of it was that it did a great job. I mean, people just, it was one of their best uh, things to get out there to get that debit card. It was a great hit. But exactly what are they selling? Do whatever you believe. They're saying go out and whatever you believe in and you think is something that you need to do, you go ahead and do it. But be sure that you use our debit card when you do it. But the point is this, that we can't just do whatever we believe. Whether I believe something is right for me doesn't necessarily make it true. Many times people don't want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is not like them. And so, as people look at, they look at the teachings of Jesus Christ, and it says, this isn't right, this isn't for me, I don't want to be doing these things. And it's because what's happening is, is that they decided that they're going to live their life one way, and the Lord is having them to live their life another way. And so they don't want to adjust. They want God to adjust to them, but not them to adjust to God. You know, as we look at it, we talked about it last week. When, when we have hard times, when we have struggles in our lives, we have two ways that we can go. There's two paths that we take. We can become bitter, or we can become better. We can give up. 
or we can grow up. And what that means is we understand that there's going to be times and troubles. Therefore, we grow up, we take responsibility, and we go through those problems. Or we become hard-hearted toward God because God's not doing what we want Him to do. Or we can start following Christ. And those hard times get us to become more connected to the Lord. See, this is what we were talking about last week. When, when we had a time where John the Baptist was having a hard time in his life. He was out there, he was preaching, he was telling the truth, and he, was, and he, he went into jail because he was preaching the truth of God. And he came to a time where he was needing to have his faith strengthened. Therefore, he sent out his two disciples to go find Jesus and ask him if Jesus was the one or should they wait for another one. And Jesus showed his disciples that he was the Messiah. He was healing the lame. He was causing the blind to see. He was causing the deaf to hear. The Lord was performing the miracles and he was preaching. And so when Jesus started talking about John the Baptist, instead of putting John the Baptist down, Jesus gave him one of the greatest compliments given to man. Jesus told him that there was no other man born of woman that was greater than John. I mean, he was putting them right up there with Abraham and Moses, and he was talking about the people that were founders of our faith, and he said, John the Baptist is one of these. But then Jesus explained to him that no matter what John did and no matter what Jesus did, people are going to find fault with it. They found all sorts of excuses not to follow the Lord, not to accept his teaching, not to accept who Jesus was. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15 through 19, we'll read it this morning, and this is what Jesus was saying. He said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is likened to children sitting in the markets, and they call them to their fellows. And saying, we have piped unto you, and, we, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. And for John neither came eating nor drinking, and they say, he hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine bibber, and a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. So, where John was strict in his lifestyle, The Pharisees found fault in John. And basically, what Jesus was telling me, says, no matter what we do, you're not going to accept it. You have already closed your ears, you have already closed your mind to who God is. He said when John came, John separated himself from the cities, he lived out in the wilderness, He put on the clothes of what the old prophets would wear, clothes of camel hair, and it was an uncomfortable outfit. It was scratchy. It it did not feel comfortable. And the whole idea was for him not to be comfortable. He didn't want to be comfortable in this world's time. And so he did not live in the cities, lived in the wilderness. He ate of the grasshoppers, and he dipped it in honey to have a little bit good there. And when people saw how strict he was, they said, He's got a devil. Satan is abiding in him. But when Jesus joined with the society and Jesus went out with the tax collectors and Jesus sat down with the publicans and with the sinners and as they were having dinner and people said, well, look at him. He's a gluttonous and he's a wine bibber. No matter which angle that they took, they did not find, they would not accept Jesus Christ. Now, at this time, when we hear about that, when we think that Jesus is friends of tax collectors and and sinners, we go, that's who we want. In the past, it it was degrading. In the past, it was tearing down who Jesus is. In today's time, we go, that is a man of compassion. That is a person who cares, who does not mind getting his hand dirty so that he is working with the people there. So then we have to understand there was three purposes of Christ on earth. Number one was to preach the kingdom of God. 
Number two was to show that Jesus was the Son of God by the miracles that Jesus performed. And thirdly was to die on the cross for our sins. And so as we read the Gospels, we see that that's what Christ was doing. And so even though people came to Jesus by the crowds to be healed, they did not follow Jesus as the Son of God. And so Jesus spoke and he condemned the cities that he had been in because they had not believed. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 through 24, it says, Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe well, unto thee, Chorazin, and woe well, unto thee, Bethsaida, and unto thy mighty works which were done unto you, that have done unto Tyrat and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyra and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou Capernaum, which thou hast exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if thy mighty works, which have been done in thee, have been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So Jesus was sitting there talking about, Jesus was discussing with him, he said, you know, these were the places that I had worked in. No matter what I did, you're not going to believe. One day, many years ago, I was at a church, and, and I'm not going to name the church, and it's not this church. I just pulled up a picture of a church, but I remember I was at a church and a young lady came that I had met and she came and talked to me and said that the Lord had touched her heart and she feels like she should give her life to full-time service. And, and, I, and when she came to me, she came to me that day and said, what should I do? And I told her, I said, um, go home and pray about it. I don't know what God's will for you is. I can tell you what the, God says not to do, but I don't necessarily know what God's precise will for each individual is. And so I say, go home and pray. She, she, got it, she had a job at a hospital. She just bought a house, put money down on the house. And so she was led by God to give that all up and to follow the Lord. And so I told her, to go home and pray, and because the Holy Spirit leads each and every one of us differently. So the next week she comes, comes to me, and she's all excited, and she says, okay, I went home and I prayed, and, and what I did was I had, I had uh, put a fleece before the Lord. I had asked for God for a sign. I said, well, okay, what was that? And she says, well, I prayed for in the morning that the, the uh, associate pastor and the pastor would wear the same necktie, wear the same color necktie. I said, okay, what happened? She said, in the morning, uh, the associate pastor had the same color necktie. In the evening, the pastor had the same color necktie. But I wasn't sure. So then I, I asked of the Lord if, uh, if the associate pastor would change his color necktie for the evening service and that the pastor would wear the same color necktie that he wore that morning. I said, okay, what happened? And she said, it happened just like I prayed. The Lord answered my prayers. Now, I can't tell you to pray like that. I can't tell you to ask for a sign like that. But she had asked for a sign from God. And God had answered. God had done it the way that she had prayed for. And she, in the end, she goes, I'm still not sure. I said, you prayed for this, and then God answered. You prayed it, you changed it another way, and God answered, and you're still saying you're not wanting to do it. What was the problem? Well, the problem was that God didn't answer the way she wanted them to answer. She had too much invested in her life to give it all up for God. So the next time I saw her, uh, several months had gone by and such like that, the next time I saw her, I saw her... She used to be a happy, outgoing person. Next time I saw her, she wasn't happy anymore. There was not that joy in her life. Why? She knew what God wanted her to do. She felt the calling of God. She felt the leading of God. She felt like the Lord wanted her to give everything up and to follow him, but she was not willing to do it. And so that's the problem that the people were having. 
They weren't willing to give their life up for the Lord. When you look at verses 25 through 26 in Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 through 26, it said, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, so it seemed good in thy sight. You know, the Lord is sitting there and he's talking about it and he says, you know, the Lord has hid it from the wise and the prudent. What does it mean by the wise? Well, in a good way, in the scripture, when it talks about the wise, it talks about those who are following the will of God. But there are some people that are wise in the ways of the world. And what that means is that they're going to follow what they want to follow. They're going to use the, the world's metrics and, and say whether I should do something or whether I should not do something. And the prudent is those people who think themselves as being smart. Have you ever noticed that there's some people that are so smart that they don't listen to God? They have the answer to everything. They only listen to the people who agree with their way of thinking. They only search out the people that they, they look at the world the particular way that they would look at the world. They spend all their time seeking people who agree with them. They put down those who are followers of God and, and they say that, okay, but God is a crutch to help you through life because you can't do it on your, on your own. You can't plow through the problems by yourself. Basically, they're saying that whosoever believes and trusts in God for their daily life is too weak to do it on their own. And it's true. It's not that they're weak, but they're smart. It's not that they're trying to do it on their own. There's a better way. There's an easier way. And God says, yes, you come with me and we will do it together. See, these type of people who struggle and they trust in themselves and they fight through everything and they plow through everything, after a while they become hard and they become bitter. They trust no one but themselves. It's because they've had so much struggle in their life and they didn't give their life to God. There can be two paths to take to something. It could be a harder path and an easier path. And some of the people says, I'm going to struggle through on my own. I don't want any help at all. I'm the type of person that says, I want to help. I'm looking for God. I need God to help me in these hard times. But some of these people say that they, they don't care what people think. They'll do it their own way. And in the end, they have a hard life. They have a bitter life. And Jesus explains to the people that the only way that a person is going to know who God is is by going through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, doesn't matter who you are, no man, doesn't matter about your position in life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way that a person can know about God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus was saying. Matthew Chapter 11, verse 27 through 30. Jesus says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. And then he goes on to say, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, Jesus says, All things are delivered unto me, my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Once we know Christ, we know God. Jesus says that no time has man seen God, but when you see me, you see the Lord. You see my Father which are in heaven. The only way a person can have a relationship with God is to go through Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why Jesus said in verse 28... He gave the great invitation in verse 28 through 30. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
What was happening there was the Pharisees were adding on to the laws. The Pharisees were making people to have under bondage under the law, and Jesus was giving them freedom. And as Jesus was giving them freedom from the burden that was placed on them by religion, not by relationship with God. We have to understand, there are rules. There are rules in following God. There are rules to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes, there are rules. And we can't custom make the way we follow God. God says that there is a path unto righteousness, and, and we have to follow that path. We can't stray off of that path and do what we want to when we want to. God has our life going down that path. And we can't say that I'm willing to follow the Lord some of the time, but only when it's in to my convenience. So many people talk about the relationship to God, but I can't do it right now because I'm busy, or I can't do it right now because things are coming in my life. I, and basically, what we're telling people is, I'm sorry, it's not convenient to follow God. Then he's not Lord. Until we make him Lord of our life. Jesus is willing to go further, and Jesus is willing to say not just about the law, but I'm willing to go with you during those daily struggles, the problems that we have. Life is tough. Even in the good times, life is tough. But it's tougher without the Lord. And Jesus says that I'll not do it for you but I'll do it with you. We can do it together. Jesus is saying, I am here with you. The yoke was designed so that as two animals, that the two oxen would work together, they could carry twice the amount of weight or three times the amount of weight that one oxen could do it together. And in the old time, a carpenter would make a yoke according to the animal. And so not every yoke fit on every ox and on every animal, so not every yoke was the right size. And so they would make the yoke to fit that particular animal. Well, in, in the same way, as we carry our yoke, sometimes we have a burden, and that burden is sin. Or it may be a problem in our life. It may be a discouragement that we're going through or a disappointment. And what Jesus is saying is, Jesus is saying that you're not bearing it all by yourself. But I am with you. Jesus says, if you will follow me, Jesus said, if you take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You don't know Jesus until you experience Jesus, and you can't experience Jesus until you've accepted him as your Savior. Jesus gives you a piece of knowing that he is with you. And once you know that you're going through life and you're going through the struggles together with, the Christ, with Christ, that gives you the peace. But it's all about trust. It's how much are we, are we willing to give to the Lord. When the weight of the world is on your shoulder, Jesus says, I am here to carry it with you. I'm here to go along with you. And Jesus is saying, let's work together. Let's be successful in life together. You know, many times we use a, a word called backsliding. And backsliding basically is what happens is when a person is walking up a mountain or he's walking up a hill and he slides back a couple of steps. And when he walks up the hill and he slides back a couple of steps, he's got to start those steps over again. And we can use the same idea about our spiritual growth. Sometimes we're growing in the Lord and we're taking that steps and we're making progress in our steps and we're following right along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we take that yoke off and or we tell Jesus, Jesus, we don't need your help. We take the yoke off. We can do it ourselves. And in the end, we start to falter. We start to fail. 
And the reason why we backslide, the reason why we go back a couple of steps in our progress with the Lord is because we don't work together with Christ. But once we put on that yoke, we start to make progress again. The question that we have in our, in our life today is, are we willing to, to share, the Lord, share the load with the Lord? Are we willing to give our troubles with the Lord? The only way we're going to have peace in our life is to have Christ there with you. And there's some people today, you know, I, I can talk to people and they ask, the first question that they ask is, what do I have to do to be a Christian? And the question that they have is basically, is what do I have to give up in my life to be a follower of Jesus Christ? And the Lord isn't saying, what do you have to give up? Is what are you willing to give to me to help? It's all about trust. If we're willing to share our life with the Lord. How much do you trust the Lord? It's the same word that we use for faith. How much faith do you have in God is how much we trust in the Lord. Are you willing to share the load of life with the Lord today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for that you're here with us. That, Father, even through the hard times, the good times, the times we're alone, that, Father, you're here. Father, help us to see your hand in our lives. Father, I pray for those who are not saved, that they would accept you as Savior. And, Father, Lord, there are people here that are alone and struggling by themselves. And, Father, they don't know your love. And, Father, I pray today that, that you would help them to see. Help to open up their eyes and their hearts to you. Guide us, direct us, help us to work together with you. And Lord, we just ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray.